this slider control with a tooltip that updates its value and a track that changes color as the value changes and the tooltip stays in position. No JavaScript to do any of that. CSS in 2024, am I right? So <laughs> I'm going to go through some tricks and some tips and some you can use today in browsers and some are coming down the line and we're going to build it up and show you how you can get to that point. So we start with just the standard input type range, accent color set to red. And when we hover in, we get this little like outline piece. Simple enough. So this is the markup. Uh, we've got a div that wraps around an input type range. And there's this tooltip piece just for the visuals. You probably want to label here as well. But we, this is just for a demo, just to show how these techniques work. Um, so into the styles. And we've split things up into at layer, so we can just keep keep the styles structured in a way you can just unlock the different bits and have a look for yourself. Um, basic styles in here, but just using a little custom property trick here. Um, control is hovered or has a type range with focus visible. So CSS has now available. Set custom property active to one, and at the moment. Just use it for the background to change the background. It will come into play in the next, well, the layers that are coming up. So let's unlock our first layer. So this layer is called scrolls. And we unlock this one. And if we go back to our demo, now our track changes color as the type range value changes, which is pretty neat. So how is that working? So. There's a little trick here that you can do currently in browsers and there's part of it that you, you can't do in all browsers. <laughs> the trick is to define a custom property with app property. So we've got a value and um, it has an initial value of zero and the syntax is integer and inherits true. And then a keyframe animation that will just take this um, to value 100. The input type range is min 0, max 100. But you could change these values with custom properties and animate to and from different values. The important piece here is type range has an overflow hidden. And that sets like the scroll on the type range if you imagine that. Then we're using scroll driven animations and a view timeline on the WebKit slider thumb of the type range. If you've seen other videos I've done uh, recently, we did one on scroll text effects. Worth checking that out just to see some of the syntax. But essentially, a view timeline is when the element or thing comes into its scroll port and sort of covers it or is contained or enters and exits. So if you imagine the little thumb on the type range is coming into view and the view is the track for the type range. So it's coming in and it goes to the end. Then we take the animation of that. So this view timeline name, we set it to thumb on the thumb, and then we set the axis to inline, which essentially means horizontal. Here comes the trick. So this property here is timeline scope, and that takes that view timeline and you can hoist it up to another level so other things in the DOM tree can use it that aren't uh, descendants. So it means the parents or siblings or like cousins or whatever can use it too. Hoist it up with timeline scope and then the control, the wrapper is going to use it. Animation sync, which is our custom property value, both linear reverse. I want it to go the opposite direction of what it thinks it is when it scrolls. And then the animation range is contained. So when the thumb is between the two endpoints. And then the final trick is as that value updates, update the accent color on the type range. So it's going from zero to 100 and zero on HSL is like a red. So HSL zero ninety sixty six is kind of like a reddish color. And a HSL one hundred ninety sixty six is kind of a greenish color. So it just kind of works out nicely with zero to 100. We could change that. Um, we could change that to like 280, which would be purple. And if we go back, there we go, it's like a purple and that would go all the way through. And we could do 
you could do rainbows and all sorts. I'm sure you could set like the value to really high and do like, I don't know, 1200. And then, yeah, that looks kind of wild, but we'll stick to 100 for now. So that's that layer. So that's pretty cool in itself. You've got this track that can update, no JavaScript to play. That's pretty, pretty neat. So this next piece um, is to get the tooltip like piece going. Okay, so we uncomment that. Now you've got this value piece. So we already had the value because we're using it for the color. But how do you take the value and like render it into the DOM so people can see it? This is a little trick. Um, I wrote about this um, probably a couple of years ago now. I can put a blog post link below. The trick is to take a counter, CSS counter, and put the value into that via custom property. And then in your pseudo element, content, which is a string you can cast, um, well, you can take the counter value and put that into the string. So essentially, when we're doing the animation and scrubbing it, we're updating the pseudo elements content, which updates the label, which makes it look like we're telling you what the value is in the label and there's no no JavaScript at play. Um, the interesting thing here is you'd want to sync the min and max of your input type range to whatever your animation is with custom properties because you could change the animation to 1200 and even though the input type range is only going to value 100, uh, this would read like 1200 or whatever you set it to. So that one's pretty cool. Let's move on to the next layer. So the next layer is anchoring. This one is rad. <laughs> so anchoring allows you to tether elements to each other uh, so for the most part, wherever they are in DOM. So you can take one element and another element and say, I want to anchor to that. And wherever that goes, I'm going to follow. And there's no JavaScript at play. It just does it. Um, pretty wild. But this tip popped up in the post where I uh, I quoted it and showed the demo for this. Really cool little technique. So um, the trick here is we have this tooltip and the anchor should actually be uh, down here. But if we go back up, we've set this anchor name to thumb on the WebKit slider thumb. So the piece on the range has this anchor. We're saying, hey, this is the anchor called thumb. Um, I've kept the name thumb for the view timeline and the anchor name, just so you can see that like CSS is clever enough to differentiate between them. Um, I think that's kind of rad. But yeah, this is the cool bit of anchoring. So we're saying position absolute the tooltip now, the little label with the value. And the default anchor it's going to tether to is wherever that thumb is. Just put it wherever the thumb is. And we're saying the left side of our tooltip should be the center point of the anchor, so the type range thumb. Go there. And the bottom of the tooltip should be the top of the thumb plus 25% of its, you know, of itself. We give it a bit of a gap. And then we translate it because there isn't quite a good way to center it yet, so we translate it by 50%, like you would when you do other sort of centering things. And that is essentially it. That will keep the tooltip in the right place, which is pretty wild. <laughs> and these two pieces here, scale and opacity, um, they will use the active custom property value that we had before, which we declared back in the foundation layer, so when we hover or have focus visible, pop up this tooltip and we have a little transition that does that. And then lastly, we don't need the tooltip to say value anymore from here. So we just change it back to counter val. So if we go back and check that out, aha, uh -huh, now we have this like, and it works like that is, that's wild, right? That is everything. I and mean, you can change this. Uh, you can change the speed of these. Maybe make them a little bit quicker. Add some custom easing potentially. There we go. That's a bit nicer. And the last piece. Now the last piece is cool. I like this because I feel like these new custom uh, timing functions via linear just. 
give you a really easy way to add a little bit more character to your transitions and animations. So here I have to admit I have cheated very slightly. Uh, I hope you'll forgive me for this, but there is a tiny bit of JavaScript, a whole whopping four lines. Um, essentially on point and move, um, I want to take the movement x, so the rate at which I'm moving the input, right? And I want to pass that into CSS uh, with a custom property. I've named it delta x. And we're using that via that custom property in a transform so we can rotate the tooltip and kind of make it look like the faster you go, the faster it's going to move. And then we're going to use linear easing, which allows us uncomment this. Linear easing allows you to define these custom easing curves. Now, they're kind of a write once, uh, use again, and don't touch again. Like I wrote an article on this as well, which I'll link. But essentially what's happening here is you're getting the delta x when you're updating, pass it in, rotate the tooltip, and then give this transition a longer time. So if you move quickly and the tooltip goes like that, then let it take a second to get back and then you can give it a more sort of character-like bounce. This is one I've, I've copied and pasted out of the article I wrote. I don't really look at it. I worked out a way to generate them with JavaScript, made a style sheet of them, and I just copy paste them when I need. So if we check out how that looks now, and did we save it? We didn't save it. So let's go back again. There we go. Like Now we have that little bouncy character. And if we open DevTools, um, pump it up. You can see there's our delta x, and it's currently 58. But when we move around, you can see it changing. So like when it's negative, it will go one way, and when it's positive, it will go the other, and then it just bounces back. And that is the trick to it: using some of the new APIs and kind of weird and wonderful ways to see how you could create these kind of controls. I think it's kind of fascinating, but yeah. Bit of a longer one, but let me know what you think. Let me know what things you're excited to see and see this and that, any suggestions you've got for what you want to see me uh, make videos on next. So, yeah, stay awesome.